Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to mount this turbo and then we're going to see if this 3D printed cup will fit my wheels. So we're going to start by removing the intake piping. Then we'll loosen the exhaust manifold before we jack it up and uh, remove the entire front down pipe. As you're watching this, some of you are probably wondering, why on earth would you remove the turbo in the first place if it was already in there and working? Well, Norway is pretty strict on what mods you can do to your car legally. If you ever watched the Mighty Car Mods video on the Volkswagen Golf they modified in Germany with the TUV approvals and legal hoops they had to go through, you get the picture. And just like in Germany, Norwegian cars have to pass an official inspection. In our case, every two years for regular cars. Also, due to the European Union implementing a stricter line on these periodic vehicle checks these last years, it means that stuff that flew under the radar, or things the garages maybe didn't bother to fault you for, no longer goes. Such was the case for my Datsun as it went in for its biannual inspection this February, and although the engine swap itself is approved, the additional turbocharging is not. Thus it faulted and for me to get it through inspection meant one of two things. Remove the turbo or get the turbocharging approved by the Norwegian Public Roads Administration. Having experienced how long it takes to get through to the bureaucracy back when I swapped in the C20 engine, I knew I wouldn't be able to meet the deadline for an approved inspection. So I removed the turbo. Got it through inspection and then sat down to write a lengthy application in a hope to get this build approved. Fast forward some 5 months and I received an answer and although not the overwhelming yes I had hoped for, it at least left me somewhat optimistic. They needed a measurement of horsepower and torque before they went further with my application. So now the turbo needs to go back in and an appointment with the dyno needs to be made. So before I put the car back down to the ground, I thought I want to see if this uh, 3D printed center cup I had made will fit. Looks pretty good, but it's pretty roomy. Now, as you can see, this doesn't look pretty, but this is just a prototype. So looks aren't important because this is just for testing purposes and uh, the final product is going to be printed at a much finer resolution. And also I'll probably add like a Datsun logo or something like, something like that. But first I need to figure out why this doesn't fit. And I think I know why. Okay, so this here are some Toyota wheels. And I think it was these wheels I used for my measurements. So let's see. That's perfect. So now I just need to make some uh, new measurements for these wheels. So 
I can get it to fit just as snug on these. Let's see how that's gonna look like on the car. That's much better. I think that's enough distractions for now. Let's just get back to the engine. So I almost had to stop filming now just because I couldn't find this little thing, which is the uh, oil feed adapter. So I found it in a pile over here fortunately or else that would be the end of this video uh, so now I'm just gonna clean it so we can get the oil feed back on after cleaning the adapter thoroughly with brake cleaner get some thread tape before it is screwed into the stock oil pressure switch location the NPT to AN adapter gets the same treatment and the oil line is fitted. Lastly, the oil pressure switch is fitted before I move on to connecting the water lines for the turbo after removing the water loop I had in their place. By now it's just a matter of connecting it the air filter, breather, and the rest of the intake piping. So that should be all mounted. The only thing left now is to try and start it and see if there's any leaks or if it all just blows up. So we definitely have a water leak, which is why I hate these braided lines. Because it makes it impossible to see if it leaks internally or if it's by one of the joints. So I had a feel over here and this uh, this side is dry, which means the, the uh, AN fitting is not leaking. So either it's leaking internally or it's coming up from this joint. And then the braid is wicking it up. Yeah, I get it. You're not supposed to use hose clamps on these uh, braided lines. But it's worked for three years, so I didn't see any problems. But the loop is back on. My turbo is now only oil cooled. And then I'm gonna go online and order me some push lock uh, fittings with plain old rubber hose, because that's what works unless you change out all of these fittings to AN2, which I'm not gonna bother with. So now I'm just gonna put the heat shield on and go for a test ride. So I've just been on a test run, uh, everything seems to work uh, work alright, the car runs fine after loading in the turbo map. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching and if you like what you saw and you want to see more on this car and uh, 
what's in store for it, uh, then please subscribe because uh, there will be more videos and uh, more mods coming up uh, pretty soon. So see you later.